Coming up, you're going to discover a sleek way to write a killer app description by looking at what other people are saying about your competitors. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co, the place you go when you want action-packed content in the app business. And today I wanna to share a way that I've been using, a strategy that I've been using to figure out how to write an app description. Now, a lot of times when we're working on ASO for our clients, you know, we wanna look at the app description not only from a keyword basis, but also from a conversion basis. Because the first two lines of an app description, which is what most people see and what most people are probably just gonna read, are gonna be the critical pieces of any app description. And so I didn't know how to actually go about this and I was struggling a little bit. And then I figured out, oh, I'll do this particular way. And I want to show you that particular strategy right now. So without further ado, let's go into the screen share. So my favorite way of writing the app description, because like I said, I get stuck is to use App Annie. Now this is completely free. Okay. And what I've done is I pulled up the call map only because I feel like they're huge, so I won't be giving too much away. And then also because I wanted to look under the health and fitness category because I felt like that was the most critical one and then show you this particular strategy. But I've been using this for games. I've been using this for health and fitness. All the different categories of apps when we're performing ASO, I've been using this particular strategy. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at the reviews. Right, Because I want, as you can see, the description for the Calm app, it says, Calm is the number one app for mindfulness and meditation to bring more clarity, joy, and peace to daily life. Now, I love that, but I'm going to break that sentence too, right? Because this is it's just not readable, right? And I would also put join the millions. And I think it's always good to put some social proof. They're the number one app, but a lot of people can say that you're the number one. It doesn't really mean anything, but I might put like join the millions, you know, over a million downloads, over a million users, whatever it is, that's what I would personally lead with because I think it hits you with social proof. Well, if a million people are using it, then I'm gonna use it too. So that's what I'm looking for. I usually try to lead with social proof as much as possible, but I'm also looking for words that the users are leaving in their reviews because they're saying, this is why I love this app, right? When I'm writing a description, I want to lead with social proof and also use keywords Use phrases, not just from an ASO perspective, ASO perspective, but use keywords and phrases that the customers are saying about why they love a particular app. All right, so here's how you do that. So you've got the app pulled up. Search for it if you don't have it pulled up. Again, this is all free. And then go into the reviews, which is on the left-hand side if you're just listening to this. And then now you can see all the reviews. Now the default is the past month. You can do the past year, which is what I would do. You can also change countries, different versions. I'll leave it at all versions. So countries, if you just want all English speaking, if you're just the US, I'm gonna leave it at default right now. You can also look at the all ratings. So favorable is gonna be anything from four to five stars. And then critical is anything one and two stars, okay? So you can just, and you can even just look at the one stars or all the five stars. But here's what I'll do is I'll look at the favorable ones. And now I'm gonna sort this. This only shows 10 by default, but I want 50. Because a lot of times when you read through these, you're not going to find anything valuable, right? But a few times you will find certain keywords that people are using. All right, so let's go through a few of these. Right here, sleep stories. Now this guy wrote a really good description. I can't describe how much the sleep stories have changed my life. I normally wake up one or three times a night and begin worrying about my daily life. The stories offer distraction that is calming and engrossing, allowing me to drift back to sleep. I sleep better. So he's really talking about sleep stuff, okay? So if your app is focused purely on the sleep side of things, think about how you can leverage that within your app. So it could be as simple as, hey, we help you fall asleep quicker, or go from waking up two to three times a day to going back to sleep instantly by listening to our sleep stories, you know? Using the keywords, using the people, the problems that people are telling us, we're gonna use that in our app description. That's how I would use that in my app description. Okay, it takes you on a journey, okay. Nothing really big here, except no. Here it says life-changing, says super friendly to use. He loves the daily meditations or he or she loves the daily meditations. 
so they're talking about anxiety, having a stressful job, this particular review. And so this could be if your your app is focused on that, right? Then you can start talking about, hey, you know, reduce anxiety, known to have some calming effects. Here's what our breathing breathing tech, techniques scientifically proven to lower anxiety, reduce anxiety, and make you fall, feel calm throughout the day. Again, all I'm doing is using words that people are telling me back into our app description, right? So you can even look at, if you're looking at other apps, I'm gonna look at the critical ones, and you can do some research on what other people are saying about your competitors. So this one, I read through a bunch of these for Calm, but they were talking about the price. Now, I don't really look at pricing too critically. I don't put any significance to it because some people are just cheap and they're never gonna pay for your app, but maybe like different things like the audio quality isn't good. Those are like more objective things that I'm looking for, not subjective things. Subjective things is price. You, there's nothing you could do about it. People are just gonna complain about price no matter what, even if you have the best app in the world, right? So that's what I would be looking for is more objective stuff. Like here, this one, battery trainer, one 13 minute meditation, my phone went dead for 30%. It could, I could play my Spotify for hours. So that could be something that they could look at, but you're looking for common themes too. So don't just go off of one review, but if there's certain other reviews that come up, then you can say, oh, I'm gonna use that in my app description. So like you can say, hey, you know, don't, doesn't drain your battery. You know, the, the only, the number one meditation app that won't kill your battery. You can do a 13 hour meditation and still have 90% left on your battery life. So something like that, right? If you're going to it, but it's some, as I've gotten stuck and we're writing more app descriptions for our clients, you know, I want to use, I think of it, the app description, especially on the iOS side as, you know, a balance between keywords and then also high conversion. So how can I, hit them with the first few sentences that shows social proof, number one. And number two, hit them with keywords and phrases that the audience is using, that customers are already using, and then use that to get them into the app as well. And you can do these for screenshots too, right? Look through all these favorable things and be like, okay, well, he likes the sleepiness. Okay, well, let me put that into my screenshot, right? So all these are very much usable within your app. Don't just think about the description, but I think it, I think I'm using this as from a conversion perspective, not so much from a keyword perspective. All right. Hope that was helpful. And guys, I will say this, look, there are two things I want to plug. All right. So you can stop this if you don't want to hear the plugs, but two things I want to plug. One is the app masters Academy. I'm very, very much excited about this. We're bringing all the courses that we have ever done. We're going to create a ton more. So be on the email list. If you're not subscribed to the email list, it's at masters.co slash newsletter, but you're going to hear about all the webinars that we've got planned with some Snapchat influencer marketing and game monetization retention and launches especially in china too so if you're familiar if you want to target the asia market we're going to bring somebody on an expert to do that so that's all going to be it'll be free for as a webinar and then if you want to get access to it later on then it's part of the it will become a part of the academy and then so go check it out it's at mastersacademy.com at mastersacademy.com it shows you our entire playbook entire playbook for just $25 a month right now. I'm not sure if I'm going to test different pricing points, but right now it's $25 a month. And then secondly, we are doing more events next year. I've got some phenomenal feedback from the events. The events are really meant for you to bring really awesome app entrepreneurs together to build lasting connections. It's one of these things where I know for me, the more connections I have, the more in depth I feel with certain people and I can relay some of my messages to them and get feedback from them, the way the, that's when the breakthroughs come. And I'll tell you a friend of mine who came to the Santa Cruz event, he said, look, Steve, I love this format. I'm going to be with you, but it took me talking about my problem to four different people and then boom, the breakthrough happened. And that's what this event is about. It's really focused more on the attendee and not just the event organizer, because a lot of these events, they bring in all these sponsors and it just dilutes the event, but we all go to an event to meet some amazing people, gain knowledge and meet some amazing people. And you're going to do that. And the knowledge that you're going to gain is going to be specific to whatever you're currently working on. That's why I love doing these events. I've gotten some phenomenal, phenomenal feedback from everybody that attends. So I hope to see you there. It is appmasters.co slash events, or you can just go to appmastersconnect.com and that'll redirect you. But appmasters.co slash events. The LA one is up. We're gonna 
start launching the New York one too, and then we're gonna do one in Bali. So be there at one of these. I promise you that you're gonna wanna attend more and more because that's what people have said to me. All right, that is it, guys. Thank you all for listening, and I will see you on the next video.